Good morning. This is Ski from Rhino Island. We do media and a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Hey, I want to start off a new series of how-to videos on marketing and some of the tools that we use to get stuff done. Of course, it starts with a Macintosh. I don't know if you can tell that from the screen. And that's a 57 Chevy Nomad. That is not me in the car. I don't own the car, but my parents owned one when I was growing up. A two-door 57 Chevy Nomad. Awesome car. But I digress. So, take your Mac, take Google Chrome, and what I'm going to do is just kind of march through uh, some of the apps that I use and some of the extensions, and we'll do one, one tool per video. And so... Uh, the first one I want to talk about is this tool called GIMP, G-I-M-P, and you will find it on GIMP.org. And so we load it up. And for some reason, it's available for the PC as well. Not sure why, but it is a free and open source image editor. I've used Photoshop for many years on and off. I've used GIMP for probably almost as many years. Uh, maybe not, but I've used it a long time. Used it in the, the Unix or Linux world. I did have a client that was doing some work on a PC and I did have to use it on a PC, but it's one of my favorite apps and it is obviously standard on uh, my Mac. And I've got all my icons. I, I use my my toolbar over on the left here and right there is a smiling GIMP face. <clears throat> so why GIMP for a marketer? Well because you're always creating images. You're always creating graphical images that you need for your content. And so when it comes up it's ready to go. Now one of the neat things about it, and especially if you're on a Mac, if I want to do a promotion for GIMP I've, I'm going to use a, what's called the command key. It kind of looks like a clover leaf. And I'm going to use the shift and I'm going to use the number four. And that puts me in a screen capture mode. I don't know if you can see this little arrow here, this little crosshair. And now what I can do is I can grab an image on the screen. And we'll go down here to the bottom. And when I release, <clears throat> uh, I clicked and drug the crosshair where I needed. When I released, it went into my screen capture folder. So now if I go back to GIMP and I do a file open and I go to my screenshots, there it is. And it's sorted by the most recent one, which was 110. So it's highlighted. I just hit open, and there it is, opened in GIMP for me to do whatever. <clears throat> now one thing, there are certain image sizes depending on the platform you're using. So I'm going to use this to do a blast for Twitter. And I happen to know that Twitter prefers images that are 2 to 1 ratio. So what I'm going to do is go <clears throat> select my rectangle select tool. I'm going to go over here to fixed act, act, uh, aspect ratio is already checked. There are other things. And I'm going to change this to 2 to 1. And then I'm going to hit tab to save that in that box. Now when I go to draw a rectangle, it's automatically going to hold the ratio of 2 to 1. So when I do that, I'm not going to be able to get it all in. So now I've got an image. I'm going to click here in the middle and I can move the box. And so we'll grab. And so now I'm going to copy that. Command X, or I mean Command C to copy. And now Command Shift V to insert it into a new image. And that's 300 by 600. So now I'm going to go to File, 
I'm going to save it for the web, which sets up a number of parameters automatically for me. I'm going to use a JPEG. I can see that the file is only 22 characters. Let's see what a PNG is size-wise. See, it's 216K. So we're going to go back to a JPEG. But since it's so small, we're going to increase the resolution. And I'll, I'll usually jump up to 90 and see what that looks like. 30K. That's not bad. And it's going to hold pretty good look and feel to it. So I'm going to hit save. And I'm going to use this in advertising. So I'm going to put this in my advertising folder. And I'm going to call it the GIMP logo. And I always like to put the size because often sites require certain size images. So 600 by 300. And somehow I lost my decimal point. So I'll put that back in. Hit save. And so there it is. And you can do all kinds of neat things with GIMP. For example, let's say I want to put a Dropbox around this. I can go to Filter, Light and Shadow, Dropbox. And here's the default. I'm going to bump this up to 6. Blur Radius. I'm going to drop. Well, let's bump it up to 18. Let's pick a color. You can, you can pick a any spot in this chart or you can go this way go this way so I want I want basically black but I want a little bit of red so I want to just point right there and it shows you the color say okay and I want 70 let's do 80 percent say okay and allow resizing that's a default and that's important I'll show you why so let's hit okay so now the diagram, or the image actually got bigger, so let's drag this out. And then we want to merge that down. And then let's clean it up a little bit. There's something called auto crop. So let's crop it. Now the diagram is 632 by 332. And it's no longer 2 to 1. So I'm going to do a control Z. So it's no longer auto cropped. I'm going to go back to my box. It's still fixed at 2 to 1. And so now I'm going to grab this corner and see how much of this highlighting I can get. And so I'm going to tweak it a little bit. I'm just moving it around. I don't know if you can see that on the screen. Just tweak it around a little bit. And I'm going to copy, and I'm going to do a Command-Shift-Insert. Now if I flatten this image, you'll see what happens. It's going to have some nice bleed behind there. And so now let's save this. So save for web. And again, let's bump it up to 90%. Save advertising, and there's the GIMP, but now it's a different size. It's now 624 by 312. Save. So let's hide this. Let's go to Twitter and let's shout about this. And let's say that kind of slows it loads. Have I mentioned how much me loves my GIMP? And then I want to link to this. One of the other tools I use is a URL shortener. And then another and also Another tool I don't want to get into, but I'm going to add, if it'll let me. I don't have trouble with one of my, oh, I'm not sure why. Somehow my text expander quit. Hmm. Huh.
let me reload this. Because what I did is I added a reference with Rhino Island for marketing purposes, and it also adds the date to that URL. I'm going to hit enter to see if GIMP retains it. It did not like that. So let's go back and take that off. Hmm, site can't be reached. That's interesting. Let's <coughs> open a new window. Let's see if we can get to Google. Okay, I can get to Google. Oh, somehow I got an H on the end there. When I was missing my... my uh, text expander. There we go. So now I've got a reference and the nice thing is GIMP knows that Rhino Island has been there. It'll be in their web logs. Now I'm going to use a URL shortener and I got a Chrome extension for that. It creates a shortcut. I'm going to copy that. Now I can go tweet about this. So have I mentioned have I mentioned Lately, how much me loves my GIMP. And then I'm going to sign this. And in my expander, I've got three. Uh, you, you typically want two or three hashtags. So I'm going to remove one of these because I used GIMP as a hashtag. Now here's the neat thing. Again, this is just Twitter on Chrome on my desktop. So now I'm going to add a photo. Click on it, go to advertising, there it is. Open it, and it's going to stick it in there. And then I'm going to say, watch for our video, how to series coming to YouTube still got 14 characters but that's good for now so let's tweet it and what we're going to see here in a second is the actual tweet with the image attached to it And there it is and you can see this little highlighting this what they call light drop box that we added to it of course if you click on it it opens it up in what I call a light box I guess that's not a term used very much anymore but it is oh we forgot to paste in the link that's why we had so many characters left so I'm going to copy this. I'm going to delete this. It's still actually out there. You can't delete it. I mean, it's in a lot of people's inboxes, so to speak. But, so let's go back, paste it in. And let's get rid of this. And let's go right here before I sign it. And let's add Okay. Have I mentioned lately how much me loves my GIMP? There's a link to the GIMP site and we can test that by going over to a new tab pasting it in, hitting enter. It should take us to GIMP. And again, it takes us to GIMP with the Rhino Island tag in there. So that's what we want. We've got it to reattach the photo, which is a little larger 
GIMP logo. We'll forget the YouTube at this point. And so there. That's just kind of a quick and dirty way that I use GIMP. We're waiting a second on here. There it loads up. So now there's a link. If we click the link, or anybody who clicks on the link clicks it, it translates it over to GIMP. And then I can track these with my URL shortener and see how many people are actually clip, clipping on it. So GIMP, tons of neat features, all kinds of things you can do with it. I'll close these, no reason to save them. I exported the image that I needed. But if you need to, to manipulate colors, there's all kinds of tools. You can do layering. You can read Photoshop files. It is a it is a great product. I'm using version 2810. Um, pretty sure that's the most recent one. Let's close this. Let's go to. The preferences. All kinds of settings. Click on help and it should open a window in the browser and take you to the help pages for GIMP. Yep. Docs in the GIMP org. And so, again, something to check out in your spare time. So, if I can help, reach out to me. Jeff at consultski.com That's my email. Jeff at consultski.com And what I also want to do is I'm going to put up at the end of this video a splash page. And the splash page will have a subscribe button so you can, can subscribe to our videos. Plus a link to the next video in the series. So that's GIMP. If you got questions, shoot me an email.